Hi everyone, just getting ourselves set up. So we're going live, all about essential oils and dogs. Literally just kind of getting ourselves ready. So um, just give us a couple of sets. Just wait for a few more people to come on. And if you can, thumbs or give us a heart, just let us know that you can see us. We're trying to position ourselves so that we can uh, talk through the oils. Uh, we're going to use one of the dogs as well tonight. And um, we've got Harry with us tonight. Harry, are you going to come and say hello while we're waiting for everyone to come on? Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Good boy. <laughs> so, for those of you that haven't met, this is Harry, or Haribo as he's known. And he's an absolute pickle. And um, we use a lot of oils with Harry because he's hyper. He's a hyper puppy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, just waiting for some thumbs up. Um, if you have questions, uh, type them in the comments bar. We're probably not going to be able to see them very clearly from where we're sitting because obviously we want to sort of try and hold our pearls and talk to you. But um, I believe we've got some fantastic um, animal lovers. Oh, thanks for the hearts. Lots of animal lovers on, uh, lots of wellness advocates on tonight and a lot of them already are using oils, so that's really fantastic. So they'll kind of answer questions as we go along. And also, secondly... I'll probably come close into the screen with my glasses and also try and read some in case it's only not answered. What we also plan to do after the live is finished, um, you know a lot of people are going to jump in, jump off and that's absolutely fine. But after the live's finished, we'll have a quick look through if there's any questions not answered and we'll go back and answer those. And then really probably over the next 24 hours as people start to watch it, if there's any other questions you've got. But we're going to try and address um, a lot of the questions you put in the uh, chat bar when we first post it. And we're going to go through some key tips. So here we are, um, down, he lays down on sea in Kent, and I say we're going to go through essential oils for dogs. So a couple of things I'm going to share with you first of all, and I do excuse me, glasses are dropping and everything else. A um, couple of things I'm going to uh, share with you is about how you use oils with dogs. So I'm hoping the dog will come up here, and I think, yeah, brilliant. So you can stay here, Harry, and hopefully he'll be with us. So diffuse him. Now, diffusing is a really, really easy way of um, bringing essential oils into your home for yourself. So I'm actually showing you at the moment the petal diffuser. Um, I love the petal diffuser because actually if you decide to go for a collection of oils, um, this is one of the fantastic um, diffusers that comes free with an essential oil kit. So I'm sure towards the end we'll cover that again about how you can get the oils if you're not already using doTERRA. Um, but we also have going tonight... Um, I don't know if you can see that in the picture, that's a Zenbo and that's just kind of a, a slightly different shape and we use a Zenbo a lot at night time just because we like the lights and um, we don't uh, use candles at all now because of there's so many things now that they find that are in candles that are kind of toxic for us and our children but also our pets and we've noticed a huge difference in not burning candles in the house so everything from mood is different i suppose our bodies have felt a lot better because we're not taking in we're not breathing in the toxins that sadly to make candles smell beautiful a lot of toxins are added and also a lot of wax that's used it's not particularly good as well so we've eradicated them uh, we love going and buying those battery operated candles that look just as real and give that wonderful effect and we like to use fairy lights and things but also using colored diffusers gives a really wonderful cozy feeling in the evenings and for us at night that's a really special thing so what would you sort of think about diffusing with dogs? Well, a lot of things you're going to diffuse with your pets is actually going to be really good for you anyway and, and the children and your family. So it's going to be good for your environment. But I've got a couple of things that I really recommend. On guard. On guard, and I'm probably going to have to sort of squint at labels now because I don't think these are in order. Um, on guard is a really good blend. And again, if you're already using doTERRA, you'll know this fights infections. Um, bacterial and viral. So why would you want to diffuse that for your pets? Well, on guard if you're diffusing that mainly where the pets are, whether it's your kitchen, your lounge, wherever you, you sort of your pets are, diffusing that will really help to build their immune system. And immune systems and animals are just like us now. I mean, A, because they've the same had antibiotics, which naturally starts to suppress the immune system. They've probably had something in the past for some kind of ailment. If they're poorly, if they've got an infection of any kind, whether it's an upset tummy, an ear infection, that again, our body starts to try and fight what's wrong with it. So it will naturally suppress your immune system. And that makes you then more open to catch you more. So it's a really good one to diffuse for your family health, but really, really good for dogs. And, and it's a great one for cats as well, actually. But we particularly notice it with the dogs. Um, so fighting viral, bacterial, and helping to boost your immune system. So that's a really cool one. And there'll be a few other tips with that oil later on as well. 
Um, for mood, um, Serenity and Balance is our favourite go-to blend now for the dogs. Serenity and Balance are, the Serenity is, with a lot of lavender as well in there, is a very calming blend and it will take away anxiety. Works amazingly with humans and children. But for us, specifically with the dogs, I mean, we worried about diffusing Serenity in the evenings because we know it's a very calming, restful blend and we diffuse it at night to help with sleep. I wrongly presumed, oh my God, are we all going to start falling asleep the minute we sit down? Serenity to help you sleep doesn't tend to happen until you physically literally lay down to go to sleep. But diffusing it in the evening or, or throughout the day if you have an anxious dog just calms the atmosphere. And as they're breathing that in and that's in your environment, you would just notice a real difference in their behaviour. And when you do use oils consistently, what you're also doing is working, it's working inside them internally. So their body starts to heal itself. So if you have a really highly anxious dog and you do diffuse serenity every single day with balance over a period of a couple of weeks, you'll start to see a, bit, a change in that behavior. You'll see the dog won't be so anxious. Things that have been proven by diffusing serenity and balance on a consistent basis. Dogs that maybe um, you know, do a lot of chewing. Um, there is some great blends you can mix to actually detract, distract, distract them from chewing furniture. But also, a lot of chewing comes sometimes again from anxiety and needing comfort. So apart from when they're puppies and it's the gums, if they're doing it as they get older, sometimes it's a real comfort thing. So by diffusing serenity and balance, it's really calming. It um, gets rid of sort of anxiety, stress. It just, it's really good for behavioural issues as well, especially the balance. Um, citrus is probably the third category of oils that we would use for diffusing. And citrus we use because we love the uplifting smells. It, for us, it's an energy uplifter. But for dogs, it's actually much more about affecting their mood. So if your dog is sometimes older dogs, dogs that again have chronic conditions. Um, we have a dog with a chronic condition. Um, we have a wonderful little Westie. Um, and sadly, she has Addison's disease, which means that she's on steroids for life. And um, we support the side effects that she sadly gets from the steroids, which without them, she would die because her adrenal gland doesn't work. And we noticed again that she has a lot of skin conditions which are exaggerated because of the, um, the steroids she's on so we obviously treat that we treat everything naturally now but diffusing and giving her internally um, we give her lemon every single day and we diffuse lemon lime's a good one grapefruit wild orange is a really good one it really lifts her mood because some days she just seems really sad mm -hmm. some days if some um, people have dogs that maybe when you've lost another pet or even an owner that's no longer in their life, whether, you know, it's, you know, sadly through sort of changes in family circumstances, they can actually get quite depressed. So again, if you think about diffusing citrus oils throughout the day, you'll really help lift their mood. And never worry about mixing either, because a favourite for us in the kitchen is On Garden Lemon. So we know we're lifting the mood for ourselves, but also our dogs, and definitely Jinx is a massive lifter for her. But also, we also know by doing that, we're also sort of providing that clean environment and helping protect their immune system. A really another good thing about diffusing um, with something like lemon is it's also an appetite lifter in dogs. So if you do have a dog that's been poorly or has had a bad shock or is just under the weather in general and his appetite, because most dogs want to eat all the time, but if his appetite suppressed at all, um, then lemon's a really good one to diffuse to lift appetite. So diffusing is a really great way to get essential oils into your home and into the environment of your dog. Topical, um, you'd be talking um, using neat, um, sorry, not neat. Topical, applying directly to the um, spot treat, the area. So what kind of things would we use topical for? Well, definitely sort of arthritis, um, lumps and bumps, um, swollen joints, achy things like that. So we would go topically. Now, depending on the dog, so Harry's a classic. I always would dilute the Harry because he's a very small breed dog. Um, also, I, you want to get as close to the skin as possible. So that's really kind of quite good as well to sort of target the area. Now, if Harry, who doesn't have arthritis or stiffness or anything else, if I wanted to treat Harry for that kind of thing, one of the greatest things is to put a couple of drops of the oils you're going to use, and which is going to cover key oils for different ailments, in your hand, and add something like, well, the best thing to add is fractionated coconut oil. And that just helps you get the oil going further. And also if there is, you know, if it was an oil that's, a, for example, a hot oil, it would just take any sort of irritation out that may affect their skin. So I always say, if in doubt, dilute. Get some oil in your hand. And one of the easiest things to do to use topically is to use it to stroke your dog. So as you're stroking, you're going down the spine. And that's a really key area to treat a dog topically 
and you will find because you're going down the spine, you're also going to start getting into the skin. That will get into his bloodstream, into his cells, and that will also start to attack those things that are wrong with them, particularly whether it's um, mainly sort of pain and arthritic issues, joint issues, things like that. Another really good place topically is the tops of their ears. And that will get straight into there. Also, the back of their head here. Right here at the back of the, like the base of their skull is a really good place, especially if you have um, dogs that suffer, again, a lot with nerves, um, fits, epilepsy. By going here, you're going as near to the brain as possible. And it's a really key place. So we were treating a dog recently for a friend who, um, the dog has epilepsy. And we literally just taught her to go with one drop of frankincense here, just at the base of his skull. He's having one drop internally every day, and he hasn't now fitted for, I think it's four and a half months. And he's completely off medication, which is wonderful. And the last place when you want to treat a dog to get oils into their system is, it's great news in small dogs, is their back, or their back, their little feet. And literally, I'm going to come right up. Just put in the oil, so what you've got on your hand, between their little pot, their little their little toes, and just going onto the pads, and between their toes, and that is a really good way to go top to go on your skin, isn't it? <laughs> He's a licky dog. So that's topical use, and the third use for dogs um, is internal, and that's why. And I'm probably Richard may cover it a little bit in his bit as well. Is you know why it's so important that when you are using essential oils it's not about having to be an expert on essential oils you can google you can buy books you can learn so much and we will support you in this group of what to use and we liaise with vets we have many 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 vets in doTERRA um which um there's a lot of vets very open now same as there is a lot of doctors very open to going naturally um as their first port of call when they're treating animals and with the oils that you use these are not over-the-counter oils that you go and buy in Holland and Barrett and Boots or online from Amazon, God forbid, because most things there are fake copies, which is a really dangerous thing. You want to ensure the oils you're buying are of the highest quality, of the best grade, have been sourced correctly, and everything's done, been done absolutely perfect. So almost, dare I say, medically, uh, medical oils, because they're of the highest grade, which is why they will support health issues. So when you come into internal, you want an oil that has nothing added to it and it has been completely harvested and everything in the right way. So every single bottle of doTERRA oil, if it's meant to be used internally, it'll actually say so on the bottle. And if you're lucky enough to have one of our um, beginner guide booklets, do you mind just getting one of those so I can show one in a sec on the desk? Sorry. Um, we do, we've um, produced a really good booklet, which is really a beginner's guide, but it gives you, um, basically it's purely on doTERRA oils. But every oil we've marked in there, so which ones you can take topically, and which ones you can use for diffuse and aromatically, but also the ones that are really safe for internal use. We internally use all the time, but so do with our dogs. So internal use is either direct onto their gums, and thank you, Rich. So that's just to show you, this is called a beginner's guide to essential oils. And um, it just gives you, <laughs> dogs and humans are not too far different with a lot of the different uses of what you would find. The ailments of humans are actually very similar what you can use for dogs. And then also in this booklet, every single oil is broken down. And so there's um, little symbols to let you know how you can use them and also what you can use them for. Because a lot of oils are not just for physical things. They're also a lot for um, emotional issues, which sometimes the emotional issue cause, causes the physical problem or the physical problem causes the emotional. So either way, there's usually emotions coming in with health. So that's a really good guide. If you don't have that, um, have a chat to the person who's introduced you to doTERRA because uh, most of our uh, business partners buy those and sort of get those to their people. And if you can't get hold of one, just send us a private message, no problem at all. So back to our internal use. <clears throat> now, Harry usually sneezes when I do this. But if Harry um, had um, really bad gut issues, I would absolutely be going topically onto his tummy, and Richard, I'm going to cover the oils for that. But I'd also get a dot, and I'd go straight into his mouth, and I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. He doesn't like it on here. And I'm putting my finger, I'd have had finger, my finger on the oil, and I'm just rubbing on his gums. You can tell our dog's actually quite used to it. He usually sneezes. <laughs> and that's a really good way to get straight into their system, and it works very quickly. Um, same for humans. Um, uh, roof of the mouth is very good for us. So if Harry had extreme pain, let's say he'd hurt himself and was in extreme pain, I would immediately put frankincense straight inside his mouth and his gums. 
because frankincense is such a good painkiller, a natural painkiller, and by going into his gums within probably five minutes, Harry would not be yelping. He will literally, it will start to have pain relief. Then I would be using it topically and going down his fur. I'd go on to, particularly if it's an injury, I'd go straight onto the injury as well. So that's a really cool one to use, but that's how you can use it with the gums. The other way you can use oils is in water, and I know when we were talking earlier about On Guard and Lemon, they're great ones for water, and Rich is going to give you some tips of um, what particular um, things you might want to use that for. So in water, if they won't drink it, then that's definitely not the way to go with them, because some dogs are really funny if you add to the water. And the third way to get them get um, oils into them um, internally is through their wet food. Um, last but not least, you can also, um, there's certain capsules that doTERRA do, which are just as as good for dogs as they are for the humans but also they do a thing called a vegetable capsule and if you know it's an oil that your animal just pulls away from he doesn't want to taste it and you know it's an oil that he needs you can actually with a little veggie capsule you just put a drop inside close the capsule and then pop it into his mouth with a bit of you know, a tasty bit of cheese or something like that so actually i think we've got a little bit of tasty cheese haven't we for you harry for being so good so come here harry good boy it's a good little boy, aren't you? I know, it was a mouthful. So diffusing, topical and internal are three great ways that we're going to go now through with some ailments of how to use oils. And I'm just going to, I'll go around the other room and just look at some of the questions if that might help. Or yeah. go through the next bit, it's okay. Yeah, so Rich is going to come over now and I probably didn't even introduce myself. If you don't know me, my name's Jan James. But thank you for listening to the first little bit and Rich is going to take over. Well, good evening, everybody. And uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, say good job, Harry. Good job. We had uh, had auditions earlier on, and um, and uh, Harry was by far and away the best behaved dog. So uh, he got the role, and he did very, very well. So good boy. <laughs> You're a good boy. Anyway, you go you go down there for a sec. So um, when Jan put the post up about having a a live about dogs, then. Um, what she asked was, has anybody got any specific questions? And thank you to those guys out there who asked the questions because what I'm gonna do is run through some of those um, main kind of ailments that people asked about and uh, sort of talk through the oils that uh, can really help with those. So I'm gonna start, it's something that Jan covered a little bit earlier on, but I'm gonna repeat it anyway because I think it's such a common problem. Uh, the, the issue of anxiety and um, Thank you, Carol Inglis and Theresa Owen, for asking the question about that with their anxious dogs and what can we do about them. Jan mentioned earlier that um, Serenity uh, and Lavender are, are great, and they are. They're truly fantastic in the way that they can work uh, at calming dogs down. It's been tremendous for us again over the last sort of couple of months. We, ah, we're back. That's <laughs> a dodgy, dodgy connection here for a second. One of our dogs, Jasper, um, suffers terribly from anxiety when there's lots of fireworks around, and I think that's probably pretty common with lots of other dogs. Fireworks and thunderstorms, he hates them. But the combination of lavender and serenity have really meant that uh, we've helped him through that over the last uh, last few weeks. And he's uh, and he's uh, well, he's just in the other room now, very very relaxed, which is which is great. Um, and as Jan said, the way you can use those oils is either by di di uh, diffusing them, um, and that's really good actually. When you've got several dogs, particularly. That works really well because all the dogs are affected by the oils at the same time in the environment that they're living in and that really helps calm them all down at the same time. Uh, if you don't diffuse and apply topically, as Jan said, down the, uh, down the back of the neck or, uh, or um, uh, on the, pa the, the, the paw pads as well, between the paw pads particularly really helps and, that, uh, uh, and do that consistently, say three or four times a day if they're particularly anxious and then over a period of time you'll find they become less and less anxious. Uh, and then sort of uh, become much more serene in their everyday life. So, so anxiety, um, yeah, very common problem, something we deal with all the time, and the oils do wonders for us, uh, particularly with Jasper. So the next one we have on the list, so I'm referring to a list that we've got here, so I keep in, keep in order. Bad breath, yeah, well, <laughs> what dogs don't have bad breath? Most dogs seem to have bad breath in one way or another. And in fact, we've got a lot of questions about that. We had uh, Susan McGregor, Susan Foster, and Glynis Wisby all asked about uh, what can they do about their dogs with bad breath? Well, you know, um, I suppose most bad breath is caused by infections in the mouth. Uh, so what we would suggest is two oils, a combination of two oils. First of all, uh, our wonderful blend called On Guard, which Jan mentioned again earlier, which is just fantastic at killing off any kinds of bacteria, bugs, uh, any kinds of infections. That and peppermint. So peppermint probably won't surprise you what a great oil that is. That's a real zinger. Um, 
Most mouth fresheners we use as humans have peppermint in them. Uh, it's no different for dogs either. So what would you do if you had um, on guard and peppermint? Well, you, there's a number of ways you can uh, apply them. You can uh, either uh, do what Jan did earlier with Harry or showed you and just rub the oils on the dog's gum. Uh, you can put the oils directly, a couple of drops directly into their wet food. Uh, that's a really easy way of doing it, or in fact in their bowl of water as well. A couple of drops in their bowl of water and they can drink that regularly, and that really freshens their breath. Um, I guess while we're on the subject, oral health overall, uh, and I think uh, this is really key, oral health overall can be really um, maintained by putting on guard and lemon in, in the dog's water as well, uh, killing off bugs and generally detoxing as well, lemon's brilliant for that. Um, so if there was ever anything we were going to do on a daily basis, day in, day out, then actually a combination of on guard and lemon is, is great. And can I just add in a tip? You can add in a tip, of course um, you can. Just <laughs> come join me on the couch over here. On the... I'm just going to add in a quick tip because, as we've and um, we've been really lucky because um, we actually got to meet um, one of the vets in the US that um, uh, you know specialises in natural ways of treating your pets anyway, which was fantastic. But something that a lot of our pets are now becoming victim of is eating too much dried food. And I get it, you know, it's convenience and all the rest of it. And vets will tell you it's got every nutrient. A dog naturally should have a wet diet and raw food diet is the absolute best so if you go and buy sort of tripe and things like that that's probably the best thing you can ever do for your pet which your will will counteract so many conditions but when you if you are a dry food feeder or even if it's just now and then a couple of things that dry food tends to do is I mean even though they'll drink a lot of water you put quite an extra strain on kidneys and I worked gosh 30 years ago now I was a, a vet assistant for a couple of years so I did a lot of work at a vet's and we started to see the side effects of cats and dogs that were mainly having a dried food diet and it was particularly very prevalent that they used to get a lot of UTIs, so kind of, um, you know, urine infections, but also they started to get kidney failure much younger. So by adding a drop of lemon to the water, if you can get your dogs into this, you will absolutely be supporting their kidneys and we've just had some amazing, um, uh, our daughter um, has a very low function on one of her kidneys and mm. she's only been taking lemon in her water for three weeks and in that three weeks she'd had blood tests done to check the function of one of the kidneys and it was running at about 40 percent and within three weeks and that's the only thing that was changed no drugs which was fantastic for it and it's now 54 percent so we know for our dogs definitely it's something we're very keen to get them and, and our dogs have, i suppose again because they've got used to the oils and I think pets, well, animals are quite instinctive. When they realise something is helping them, they kind of stick with it. So we've always got one drop of lemon in the water. Do not put essential oils in plastic. Um, plastic must be of a certain quality and type. In other words, it mustn't have anything in it that's going to buy, you know, going to break down because essential oils, in fact, any type of oil can break down petrochemicals. So you definitely don't want to put essential oils into plastic unless you know it's of the right quality. So lemon in their water, you're going to support their kidney function, you're going to help their immune system, it's good for that. It's also very good as an antihistamine, it's one of the three key oils for antihistamine. So again, our dogs are now exposed to so much in the environment and in the home as well, so you're going to suppress a lot of allergies with that as well, So and I say the fantastic mood uplifter. So it's... 100 yeah. percent and that on guard as well is yeah. you are going to really give them some oral support i mean we've been using on guard and you know it's meant no more visits to the dentist for us which yippee we love it but we found the same with the dogs i mean one of our dogs had a lot of plaque and tartar and i thought right we're going to, have to go back again that's going to be another 150 pounds for the whole and you know what the bit we hate is the fact she's going to go under anesthetic mm -hmm. and it's jinx again she's very <coughs> prone to lots of extra things because of the steroids since we've added lemon and on guard to the water every day I think now we would probably say Jinx's teeth, I mean the plaque is pretty much gone. I think yeah. there's a very tiny bit at the top still. And that's been over the last four to five months mm -hmm. since I met um, the vet in the US and kind of was guiding me on this. And again, it's really helped her kidneys. So we're getting really pleased with that. So sorry to interrupt. No, it's well. absolutely fine. It's, it's great. Sneak over there and get a drink. Well, yeah, interrupt again it's by all means if you feel <laughs> the good stuff like that. Uh, Harry wants to come and join you. So uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for that, Chan. Um, so what are we going to move on to next? Oh, ear infections. So yeah, another really common thing there. So we had a couple of guys asking about that. Susan Foster and Glynis Wisby. Yeah, ear infections, um, they can be a real problem. Quite difficult to get rid of unless you uh, treat them effectively. Um, the oils that we recommend for ear infections are a combination of basil, lavender, 
um, and melaleuca. Uh, because that combination, the lavender is, is great at helping sort of um, get rid of infections, but also calms the skin down. Melaleuca, of course, is a fantastic natural disinfectant uh, and antifungal. Um, and the combination of those three, those three oils, if you apply them regularly, soon get rid of ear infections. And uh, once again, you know, dear old Jinx does suffer from a lot of stuff, and, and we've had to use it quite regularly on Jinx. And every time it works, uh, we should start taking some before and after shots of these things because it's quite remarkable how, how quickly and how effectively they do work. So how do you actually um, apply these? Well, uh, you apply the oils to the base uh, and the back of the ear. And if our model comes back, Jan will show you that again. <laughs> so, so the base and the back of the ear, Harry, please. Can we go? Uh... So very important, I probably should have said it at the first part, you don't ever put essential oils into the ear or into the eyes. Just don't go there. You just don't do it. So with ear infections, you are going to, again, and I do recommend mm. those three oils, a little bit of fractionated coconut oil. Yeah. Just mix it up in something, china or glass, so you're not going to get anything else nasty in there. Finger in and literally wipe in, if you can see, on the top of the ear here, also round the back. And we're trying to get into the, under, into the skin under yeah. the fur, and he's got lovely furry ears, Harry and then in front of the ear. And you'd want to do that three to four times a day. And you'd probably do that for a couple of days. You will be getting the pain relief, as Richard said, the lavender is a really good pain reliever as well. And just, I mean, I know we did this last, mm -hmm. um, well, we were the lovely lady last night, Helen, and um, I know um, she did her dog. We sort of did that at the end of the evening and he'd been yelping every time anybody went near his ear. And by the time she'd treated him once, he'd stopped yelping. What I would say, it's a bit like, you know, when you're sadly taking things like antibiotics. Finish the course. So if you know it's definitely an ear infection, I would be looking at doing that two to three days because I think even though you would probably see the symptoms change quite quickly and maybe the dog's not yelping and maybe the ear looks better, I would still, you're not going to harm mm. it. The great thing about essential oils, isn't it, is that you can't really overdose on them. They, yeah. The body will just not use what it doesn't need. Because it's natural, mm. it just won't use what it doesn't need. So I'd rather go on the safety side and we would always do jinx for at least three days. Yeah. yeah, I would. And I think on that note as well, I mean, animals are really perceptive. So so if you start using oil they don't particularly like for some reason, they'll let you know. They'll, they'll, they'll react to that. They'll pull, it, they'll pull away. You see, the other dogs who didn't get through the audition are now playing up. So good choice. We chose them. So that's excellent. Um, so that, that's an important thing. Right, okay, so another thing, another really common problem, uh, particularly as dogs get older, uh, is arthritis and joint stiffness. And it's, uh, it can be really distressing, actually, and, and, and we're fortunate at the moment our dogs haven't got that. We've had lots of dogs previously that have suffered from it, particularly some of our bigger dogs, um, some of our German Shepherds, and it was really unfortunate. And that was before we uh, knew about the oils. If only we had them, then maybe we could have helped them a lot more. But arthritis and stiff joints is... is uh, it's a problem, and as I say, it, is, it can be distressing, particularly for the owner and the dog as well. So a combination of a few oils here, frankincense and, and deep blue. Deep blue is uh, another wonderful blend that can be used, which is specifically designed for muscular, uh, muscular pains, joint pains. Um, and that combined with frankincense, and I'd also think probably wintergreen and lavender and even peppermint, all those together, if you make a combination of those, and you can either apply those to the dog down the, down the spine, uh, so it just gets into their system, or you can apply them to, to direct to their joints or the point where you think you've got pain. And they do a number of things. What they do is they actually bring down swelling uh, and they take away pain, and they actually promote cellular health as well. And all of those things are really important when it comes to um, uh, treating arthritis and joint pain. And once again, they are really effective. We haven't used those on our dogs. We have used them on ourselves, though, particularly Jan. And I can tell, I can tell you, as Jan said earlier, actually humans and dogs and the oils that you can use are not far different. You probably use slightly different amounts, but uh, the way they work is, is very similar. And we've had uh, some fantastic results. We've seen some fantastic results with people who suffer from from arthritis and joint pain. Um, uh, you know, and uh, and we know that, that would be uh, a great help for dogs. So that was great, and thank you for that. And that particular question was asked by um, Lindsay Jackson and Susan Foster. So thank you for that. Another great, another great question. And uh, uh, moving on. So upset tummies. <laughs> we all dread upset tummies. They all seem to come at the most inconvenient time. 
Uh, and uh, we've had some pretty big disasters in people's houses with our dogs having upset tummies. It's always really, really embarrassing. Um, but there's our oils uh, that can really help with this too. We have a brilliant blend called Digest Zen, and I guess by the name, you'll guess what it's for. It is specifically a combination of seven oils that can really help with digestive issues. Uh, if, you've got, if your dog has got a, an upset tummy, then it will calm the tummy down. If your dog is, uh, got, uh, is finding it difficult to digest food, is bloated, um, is constipated, then Digest Zen will help with all of those things. Uh, it's quite remarkable because not only does it stop tummy upsets and calms those down, it also uh, gets the tummy and, and uh, working again when when you when the dogs are bunged up. So it's a great oil and um, it's one of those go-to oils that we have in our little sort of box of magic tricks for the animals. It's always there. So with digestion, how do you use it? Two ways. Uh, again, mainly use it um, topically. We tend to use it topically more than anything else. Um, and as Jan showed earlier, it's great just to get it, uh, get a couple of drops, and just swipe it on the inside of the, of the mouth. That works really well. You can actually put it on the uh, back of the legs as well, on the pads uh, of, the, of the back of the back feet. <laughs> More than Harry, uh, and maybe on the tummy as well. <laughs> Harry loves it if he has it. He doesn't often have a tummy upset. Jinx does, but if I do this with Jinx, Harry demands it as well. But rubbing here, as Richard said, is actually going to also help with any crampy pains and you know what they can't always tell us what's yeah. going on so we know that's a pain reliever in there as well as calming his tummy down yeah. or if the opposite i don't know if you covered it being constipation as well yeah yeah does yeah. everything yeah and so you love a bit of digestion so the other thing we'd say is if your dog is prepared is sort of prone to get tummy upsets um yeah it might be something to do with the diet but quite often it can be in the environment they're living in so they can be picking up bacteria or things uh, from anywhere what Jan mentioned earlier is using diffusers. So we have diffusers running all around the house and we often have on guard uh, pumping out of them constantly. That stops our dogs getting ill a lot of the time. Stops us getting ill, helps our yes. dogs tremendously <laughs> as well. So if your doggy does sort of suffer from um, getting upset tummies, it might be a really good idea to diffuse that regularly as well in the environment that they're living in. Um, I think the other one with that is if, especially sometimes with puppies, if it's chronic diarrhea, I mean, you should always seek the advice of a vet anyway, absolutely. But I would immediately go for in the gums again because yeah. that's going to get into the bloodstream really quickly and going to start working. And again, you would probably, especially for an upset tummy, go at least every two to three hours at least mm. um, until you start to see a change and then you could slow down a bit. And probably within... I'll be honest, we've never gone past the day one, have we? It's Not always really. worked. Um, it's also good for wind. If you have a very gassy dog, um, stroking their tummy each day with a couple of drops of digestion on your hand, you will start to get rid of gassiness and blow, you know, that awful smell when do dogs let off those little pumpies. That's really good. But what you're also doing is an essential oil starts to, doesn't just sort out the symptom, it also goes to the root cause. So by doing that, whatever's been going on in their gut, whether it's something at some point's inflamed the gut, you will actually, the oils will start working to, to calm that down. So yeah. we noticed um, a friend of ours, again, was a very old dog. And, you know, we, we know we've our last, obviously, bless our last puppies that we had all passed now. But we're very elderly. Wind was a big thing. And we were trying everything. But I wish we'd known about digestion. Yeah. And she was using that probably daily. In fact, she still does use it daily. But he doesn't have any wind problems now. So within a couple of weeks, the wind seems to, you know, that gas and wind stops. And that also means... They've got comfort. There's no pain going on, which is really, yeah. you know, because yeah. it doesn't mean they're not in, you know, they're usually in pain if they get a lot of wind as well. Yeah, uh, and, that, and that's so true. Um, we did want to talk about appetite loss as well, didn't we? Uh, yeah, I was talking about that, wasn't I? Yeah, and, and I, think, I think that's, um, yeah, appetite loss, that can be caused by, appetite loss usually indicates that a dog's not well. We know that. Um, so there's a number of things you can do about that. Because um, while we're talking about digestive issues, quite often if they've got tummy upsets or their tummy's not right, then di we use digestion and that often sorts things out and it perks their mood up because, um, you know, they feel better than they start eating again. But I think you mentioned earlier, didn't you, about sort of mood uplifting Yeah, and using... mood, mood uplifting oils yeah. will really help with appetite with dogs, definitely. Yeah. Um, so anything citrusy. Um, two great blends we do is one's called citrus bliss and one's called elevation so they're a good all-round blend um, but i say if you want to just go with an individual oil, like i said i think for us probably 
is it, our key diffusing kitchen oil is lemon and on guard and yeah. we're covering both with that and again you say if you've got a depressed dog or a dog that's had surgery and is particularly down a lot its appetite diffusing lemon nearby is a really good one as well and did you cover about the bed at all did you cover about bedding uh so we no we didn't but that's the anxiety thing wasn't it did you yeah. not talk through that no no so. you wouldn't cover it on anxiety but. okay so just just on that point um something we've done is we make up our own blends and these are like recipes that obviously that have come um, from vets and things so depending on what you're treating but this is our anxiety blend and we um spritz the jasper who is the the one that has serious serious issues with his anxiety and that's because of his past i mean you know he hasn't come from a good place and he can't help but get really nervous but by being consistent with this but we spray their bedding and we spray their toys as well oh, yeah. so that they are they're around all the time so again if you had a dog with them um... that's jasper's <laughs> toy beautiful isn't it it's gross that's <laughs> <laughs> been everywhere but if you are um, I've got a dog with a with a bad appetite, then spraying um, you know a mixture of lemon and water. Do recommend if you're going to add to water, you add distilled water because a lot of chemicals in our water now can actually sort of actually affect the the, the strength and quality of the oil. So get a, a bottle of distilled water is really cheap. So just get a bottle of distilled water, make up in a glass bottle a little spritzer, and spray all their bedding. So I say if you wanted to work on appetite then have some lemon in there, but I'd put some on guard in there as well, because again, that's also going to really help support the immune system, so that's a really good one to spray their bed in, and I say some of their toys as well is really good. Yeah, and, and the thing I'd add to that is, it is funny, as I was saying earlier, um, the, the dogs usually know if they need oils, and they, they gravitate towards them, and, and Jasper, so ever so funny in the morning, every morning I come down, first thing I do, because he's always a bit sort of uptight, or a bit hyper in the morning, so I spray him with that, and he, he, he knows, he sees the bottle and he just sits down there and looks expectantly at me and actually enjoys being sprayed with it. And then uh, as soon as you spray, he toddles off. But he knows that it's the right thing for him and he feels better as a consequence, yeah. doesn't he? And I think so, on that, and sorry just to add in, but we also spray the other dogs. So even though the other dogs aren't anxious, it's, it's again, it's his environment. And when he's anxious, and sometimes actually I can see the others get a little bit anxious as well. So if you've got more than one dog... Um, and you're, you're going with those with a more an emotional thing like eating or anxiety, etc. Then it's quite good to spritz both dogs because they're going to be near each other and it's going to kind of the smells are coming off and that just works really well together. Yeah. So, we do that. So, although the others don't need it, bless them, then you'll get a quick spritz as well. And you can just see that that just, just calms them all down together. Mm. But diffuse it and in the evening. Um, yeah, we, 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 wouldn't, we wouldn't have a relaxing evening when we stop at night, which is usually not till nine o'clock when we come in the lounge, usually, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And I think because we've been busy all day, it's because we have small dogs now, I mean, when we have big dogs, they rest when you rest. Small dogs don't. They are, well, ours don't. And maybe it's just because we don't like, we don't train, do we? We just let them be themselves. <laughs> it's not a good, good sign, really, is it? There's no training here. And um, they are like, kids on food colouring, you know, they are hyper and it's like, right, we're sitting down, we're just going to eat dinner or we've just finished dinner and we want to watch a bit of TV and there is four dogs behaving like fleas, bing, 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 and we get that, in fact, a lot of time now you get the diffuser on about half an hour before we come in. Yeah, yeah, getting prepared. And diffusing <laughs> serenity and balance, well, it is, it's just like a switch. Within minutes, they're not all, oh, me, 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 attention, they're just relaxing and, um, I mean, Jinx will hang off the side of the settee with her nose on the diffuser because she, for some reason, really wants to take it in deep. And they'll all kind of jump around, have a bit of a spring, and then they kind of just go flat out on the rugs, don't they? They do. It's they great. really just relax. And yeah. that just makes it lovely for all of us. And um, when we have people visit with hyperactive children, we double the dose. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have some wonderful friends with amazing children, um, but some children, you know, I do know, been there. Uh, in fact, mine are still sometimes very hyperactive. So having that diffuser in the evening just calms the whole family down. It's brilliant. In fact, we did a lot of diffusing around our grown-up children um, at Christmas, didn't we? Yeah. On guard to get rid of the germs. Everybody came with flu. But every evening, and every time, oh, it's so calm here. And I'm thinking, no. We are we are calming you with the oils, so yeah. yeah, it's a really great one for the for adults and kids as well. Yeah, it is. Uh, and the final thing uh, we're going to mention is about allergies. So a lot of dogs do suffer from allergies, uh, um, and the, the the great thing about allergies is that once again they are are treatable, and we have a wonderful blend called Tri Ease, and it's a combination of three oils: it's peppermint, lavender, and uh, lemon. Um, 
and there's, we should have a little bottle there. And it comes in capsules. The good thing is it comes in capsules, so you don't even have to worry about mixing them together. You literally just get a capsule. And what I tend to do is put it in the, in the dog's food, directly in their wet food again, and they'll, they'll eat it and they won't turn their nose up at it. Really helps, it really helps. Jinx again, who gets quite a lot of skin irritation, uh, we use the tries for that as well, and it's remarkable. She stops scratching, doesn't she? Sometimes yeah. she it seems to drive her crazy sometimes, so we give her some tries, calms her skin down, and uh, she's a uh, happy doggy yeah. again, isn't she? And I think the key thing with this is, the only thing in this capsule is one drop of peppermint, one drop of lemon, and one drop of lavender. So, a couple of things, if you've got a tiny dog and... <laughs> All right, he's never asleep now. Um, you may not find they'll take that. I mean, Jinx will take it in her wet food, so she's absolutely fine. But so she has it every day because, and Westies anyway can have very easily kind of eczema type skin. They very quickly get itchy things. Um, Labradors and Retrievers attend, they tend to be quite good. In fact, a lot of dogs now, and I think again, the environment that we all live in and what we're feeding them has caused a lot more skin allergies with pets. But either one capsule in their food or you can stick a pin in the capsule and squirt the liquid out and mix it in the wet food. Or you can literally, if, you're, if you've got the oils as a set, and we'll just talk about a set at the end probably, mm -hmm. put one drop of each of those oils in their food. Another great way is you can use that topically as well. You will have the same effects if you put one drop of lemon, peppermint and lavender in your hand, a little bit of fractionated coconut oil, or again, pop one of those and squeeze it into your hand and just stroke your dog down the back, tops of his ears, round his feet, mm -hmm. Doing that every single day will completely start to build up their immune system against things that normally irritate them that will calm their skin down. So even if it's, you know, a flea allergy, it could be a food allergy, anything like that, that is, that's kind of your natural pyriton. So it's a really cool thing and exactly the same for adults and children. So we're never without that because being surrounded by fields, it's, there's always dust and all the things that happen when they harvest oh, yeah. and that's yeah. really when the dogs get quite bad anyway isn't it we've yeah. noticed at harvest yeah. time all the dogs are scratching massively and we just get straight straight onto the trial yeah. it's, 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 it's a great it's a great thing and uh, as jan said actually you can you don't necessarily have to have them mixed up together it's very easy just to put one drop of each of those three oils in into food and uh, it works very well so those are the main things we're going to well those are the things we're going to cover this evening and thank you for the questions I have to say there were a couple of other questions about a couple of other things, but we uh, um, we need to know a bit more detail to be able yeah. to to answer those. One was about Cushing's disease, another was about hormonal issues, um, yeah. and we sort of know, need to know a little bit more background before we can really sort of yeah. suggest which. So can with the Cushing's, um, some people um, Cushing's can come sometimes from steroids, and sometimes some people use the word Cushing's for exactly what Jinx has got, which is Addison's disease, because it's usually to do with the adrenal yeah. gland. So um, I think it was Debbie Miller that asked that one, wasn't it? So yeah, it if was. you can ping me, I mean, even if you just put it on here, Debbie, a bit more specifics. Um, sadly, if, it is added, if the adrenal gland isn't working, then I don't believe, I mean, it's something I'm still investigating and exploring because we would love after eight years to get jinx off of well, steroids. Yeah. But what we do mm -hmm. do is there's a lot of oils that we use to support her because some of the side effects of long-term side effects um, of long-term steroids, which are nasty, nasty things anyway, is um, liver damage, and so we use quite a selection of oils now. Um, Helichrysum is a really good one for that, so we're using that as well. So I'm, I'm hopefully we can support you with some answers, but we just would want to know a bit more specifics about that. Um, and the other one was hormonal issues. From Debbie Brewer. Thank you, Debbie. For that Debbie question. Brewer. Yeah. And I suppose, again, when you say hormonal issues, it, it, you know, is it a female, is it a dog, is it because they've been neutered? Um, is it a side effect of being neutered or you know, castrated or spayed? So, again, just a little bit more detail because, I mean, obviously there's, you know, and I suppose almost has it been diagnosed and really kind of what angles the vet gone on on it as well would be really interesting to know as well. So if you can give us some more details on that, we'll ha happily do research. And we'll try and keep it to this feed that's under this video because I'm sure the video will come up a lot. So mm. it'll be, we'll keep sort of answering the questions in there as well. So we may not do it tonight, but we definitely will tomorrow. Yes. Um, and a couple of other things. Was there anything else you wanted to cover particularly? No, not this evening, but like, as you quite rightly say, if there's anything that you feel that you would like us to cover yeah. or answer questions on, then um, please just put them in the, in the sort of chat bar or the, the comment yeah. section underneath and, and we can get back to you. Uh, but those are, the, those are the most popular yeah. questions that came through. And I so. think, yeah, and I think a couple of other things I was doing some research on. Um, a lot of the supplements that doTERRA do um, are, are really good for pets as well. Um, 
I know sort of um, some of the ones with Amigas in, some animals need Amigas added to their diet for specific conditions they've got, uh, tries as we've just covered. They also do a thing called Deep Blue in the capsules. So I know Richard probably, we talked about the Deep Blue. Deep Blue for our So I went out the room because we actually had a drinking. car trying to get to the farm. And we're in the middle of nowhere, so a car appearing is quite strange, but it mm. was for another farm. Oh, oh gosh, the wrong bit. We nearly had a visitor, Very last thing, but we yeah. didn't, yeah. Sorry, if, but if you know where we live, um, we're about a mile from the nearest neighbour. <laughs> this is marvellous, marvellous. So, Deep Blue, Richard was telling you about earlier on, well, there is a, a capsule, and it isn't actually the Deep Blue liquid in it, because obviously some of the things there you wouldn't take internally. Wintergreen is not a not an internal oil. <clears throat> but they do, a, um, and it is to support people that have arthritis, um, inflammation in joints, etc. So it's something I personally use every day. So as our dogs get older, that'll be one of the ones we'll look at rather than, again, a lot of the nasty ones with Brufin, etc. on the market, which, again, have all the side effects. So we'll be supporting our dogs if they do get a little bit stiff in their joints as they get older with deep blue capsules. So that's one you might want to know about or look into. And I think really the only thing we wanted to end with, and we will try and look, oh God, my eyes are so bad. I'm going to come up and see. Their eyes are actually incredibly small. So they, I can't. Oh, I can't read. this is lots of people talking. I can see names like Lou and Sabrina and Lorna, and um, oh Tanya and Lucy and oh, there's loads of lovely names there. I can't read the words though. No. <clears throat> so I can't read your questions. So I do apologise if anybody's gagging for an answer. But maybe I say I know we've got a couple of really good dog lovers in the group um, in there that have got oils as well. So you're watching this video, and live or not, and you're probably now thinking, right, okay, so I think just to retract what we said at the beginning, we are only advising on doTERRA. Why do we only advise on doTERRA? Because after many months of research, we didn't choose to use doTERRA until we did our research properly. And doTERRA in the eight short years it's been going is now the number one essential oil provider in the world. There's a lot of key reasons why their oils are now being tested and tried in teaching hospitals. It is the only central oil company that has attracted people in the medical profession, everything from top high-flying consultants in London and Harley Street. America is, there's more doctors, nurses and vets in this business than, than I've ever, I just can't believe because so many of these people are very aware that most drugs started by copying the chemical composition of a plant and the essential oils. So, you know, this is not some voodoo, you know, new thing. Essential oils have been around for a very long time. So we are only advising on oils that we know of the purest, highest quality. There isn't anything to match them. And we wouldn't use anything else on our family or pets. Yeah. If you don't have your own account with doTERRA, the only way you can buy doTERRA is through a wellness advocate. And that, I suppose, is one of the best things about it. That's why the business has become, you know, it's in... 80, 90 countries, it's a massive global business and it's, you know, in Europe been here a couple of years so we're kind of a few years behind everybody knowing it's here but I'll give it another two years I think the whole, the whole of Europe will know who doTERRA is but you would need to go to a wellness advocate you can ping us a message if you want and we'll either reconnect you to how you heard about us or we'll, we'll support you in any way you need but retailing is probably the most expensive way to buy oils you know, a good quality oil I, I compare our oils to, to Prada it's Primark v Prada. It's the best quality. <laughs> and they last forever. They don't go off. It's having what you need when you need it. And I suppose you could be watching the video and thinking, right, we've got digestive issues with the dog. We'll just get the digestion. And that's fantastic. And I say, a wellness advocate will sort you out, take your order, whatever you wish. But there's going to be other rules you're going to need, especially if you really want to start to go down the natural route. And especially here in the UK and Europe, where vet bills, well, probably everywhere, actually, I doubt it's any different in America, but, mm. you know, vets are extremely expensive, and even if you've got insurance, you know, once you've usually had something, I mean, you know, Jinx, we couldn't get insurance for love and money for her, so once they've got a chronic condition, so having the right oils when you need it is probably really important, so they do a wonderful collection of oils, um, and it's the most cost-effective way to get oils, where you get a, the kind of top 10 key oils, and you can either get them on their own, or you can go up to what we call a home essentials kit. And again, let's say we probably got some pictures on the paper somewhere anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you go for home essentials, you will get your diffuser. And that kind of pretty much works out as free with the kit. So that is a really good way to start. And that would give you frankincense, which is a really highly expensive oil. Deep blue, oregano, melaleuca, lemon, lavender, peppermint. Yeah. On guard, breathe and digestion. I did that. 
all from my hand. Well done. Nice. I'm actually really <laughs> high five I, to I, me. I was ready to jump in, but no. You As usually one, I was thinking, oh, what's number 10? And he always says different ones. Anyway, so oregano, which we didn't really cover oregano tonight, but no. oregano is is what we call a, it's a kick horse oil. So if you have um, a really bad viral bacterial infection, oregano is a hot oil, so you always dilute it, but if it's a bug you cannot move, whether it's in a human or an animal, oh my gosh, go to oregano. Oregano is being used in by farmers that are open and realize that by giving all these antibiotics to chickens and cows and all the things that become in our food chain and fill us with antibiotics is also meaning their animals are becoming resistant, which means then, of course, their yield is lower because more animals die because when they do get an infection, they're resistant, they're just, the, the, the antibiotics don't kick it. So, Googling oregano, there is some amazing farmers, and I don't know about the UK, but in America, there's loads so of big farmers amazing. now that absolutely use oregano in daily feed and water for their animals and use it as their natural antibiotic, which keeps their animals with a high yield, obviously, which is what they want, but it just means that they're not, for our sake as well, they're not being full of antibiotics. So oregano is a really good kicker oil. Frankincense is the king, and it's absolutely the oil that, as we were saying earlier on about pain, is yeah. really good for pain relief. We take it internally every single day. We do that because frankincense is one of those oils that will literally stop cancer cells starting. It's one of the key oils that is known to work against cancer, but also help the body and keep your body in the right place but with animals as well and it's such a good pain reliever mm. so and, it, and it's an expensive oil I mean it comes from Oman it's, it's you know you need a lot of the plant matter to get the oil and everything else so it's um yeah it's, it's an amazing oil and it's it's the one that Richard loves to share about Tutankhamun oh yeah I think I could talk about Tutankhamun yes um so uh, yeah just very briefly when they opened up Tutankhamun's tomb they found essential oils in there one of which was frankincense and when they tested it so this is after thousands of years when they tested it they found that it was still viable so what that means is essential oils last a long time so you don't have to worry about them uh, going out of date uh, it means you can use as much or as little as you want and you don't have to worry about that uh, provided you keep them in sort of well you don't have to keep them in a, in a, in a pyramid but if you just keep them out of direct sunlight and not too hot then they will uh, always be there for you when you need them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a really good oil to have, and obviously melaleuca, which a lot of people may know as tea tree, but it's the most, I love it every time I meet an aromatherapist and they smell our melaleuca, they go, oh, wow, that is pure, that's amazing. So, And I know um, Teresa, I don't know if you're on tonight, Teresa Rowan, but um, she had um, somebody she met that um, is a consultant at a hospital, but she was smelling our oils, and she knew it even down to exactly what plant because the purity of our oils meant that she's one of these people that's very clever that can smell something, tell you exactly what it is. And she said, oh, normally essential oils, I couldn't tell you which plant it is because there's usually always something added. And she smelled a couple of our oils and just said, I immediately know exactly what oil that is. And she said, my gosh, I've never come across something so pure. So to me, if you're going to use oils for health, that's exactly, you know, yeah. you, go, you go with what's going to work. The only last tip I'm going to give you is do not use oil burners. Um, I loved an oil burner, yeah, so there you've got your candle tea light, of course, which is not good as we've since learned, but also when you put an oil in a burner, you will actually take away a lot of the good health qualities that oil has, so although you may still have a bit of the smell, you're actually going to wreck the, the, the quality of the oil, so don't waste your oils in an oil burner, you will not get the health benefits as you would with a diffuser, and that's the whole point of diffuser, is that the purity of the oil stays exactly as it should, so yeah. diffusing is key. Home Essentials Kit is probably the best kit, we believe, for people that want to start um, supporting their family and their pets. It's because of the diffuser mm -hmm. and the amount of oils you get. It's a brilliant kit. So I say have a chat with WAs, etc. And um, we really hope you've enjoyed learning yeah. about dogs. Yeah, we certainly enjoyed yeah. it. And uh, we use them day in, day out with our dogs. And uh, we've had enormous benefits from yeah. them. And well, our dogs have as well, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah, we get benefits the dogs have. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. We will look at all your questions probably tomorrow as well. So thank you, thank you, yeah, thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been great connecting with you guys again. And the more we do our lives, the more we get comfortable. So yeah. the more we'll do them. And a great thing, if you're watching this video, mind you, you won't see this bit because it'll be right at the end. But <laughs> when you re-watch your video, you can kind of keep moving to bits you want to get to. But... Anyway, we hope you've yeah. enjoyed it, and we hope you've heard us clearly, and um, hope you enjoyed meeting Harry as well. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you ever so, everybody. Thank you. Thank I don't you. know how to turn off, though, so Bye. yeah. I'm going to find Bye. a button somewhere. I don't know. So thank you, everybody.